Low quality fans of a high quality Bruins team. That is a dub. I am having so much fun. I'm having so much fun. And it's because of the team. And it's because of you guys. Because this is just an ass kicking part of the season. 10 and 2 on our last 12. We're now one point, as of the time of recording, one point behind Toronto for third in the Atlantic. Again, I don't care about our seeding come playoff time as long as we make it, but still feels good, right? I'm going to say this right in the beginning because I haven't said it in the beginning of a video in a while, and our viewership is, is still creeping up little by little, which I'm just so thankful for, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Like, comment, subscribe. Nailed it. There is a podcast that I am part of, the Short Shift Podcast, linked below. Not really linked, but you can find it wherever you get your podcasts. And I'm going to an ECHL game tomorrow, Stingrays. I will wear whatever jersey you guys choose for me. Put it in the comments below. Will not wear a Capitals jersey because they are affiliated with the Stingrays. But I don't feel good about that right now, so I won't wear a Caps jersey. Any of the other jerseys. Shit, I should look up who they play. They are playing the Jacksonville Icemen associated with the Rangers. I guess I could wear the Liberty, but I don't really want to. So anything else? No Capitals, no Rangers. What do you want me to what do you want to what do you want me to wear? Anyway, let's talk about this dub. This was another playoff game that we come out with a win. Let's take notice of that. It really felt like a playoff game. And again, just like the Predators one, we did get the dub in the end. That's, a per that, that's an important thing to notice. And if you look at the lines, now this isn't going to go into defensive pairings, but first line was dominant as usual. Third line was incredible and completely dominant of their opposition. Fourth line, even, offset each other with whoever they had out on the ice, which is fine. The only line that technically by advanced analytics lost their battle is a second. And I can't explain how that is because the game I just watched, the second line looks pretty fucking good. I feel great about this team. And I know everyone's going to talk about what our needs are. That's a fair conversation. I feel great. And I just, I just. Hellebuck gets a start for the Jets. They are missing some important pieces. They're a little banged up. I'm still taking the game for what it's worth, which is a nice dub in a hard fought battle. I don't know what else to say about this team. It's a middle-of-the-road team. They have some middle-of-the-road stats. Middle-of-the-road with goals for, goals against. I believe they have a really bad penalty kill. But other than that, everything's just kind of even keel, baby. On our end, Rask gets a start. We're going to talk a little bit about Rask coming up. Marshan takes warm-ups. You'll remember that we thought he was going to miss some games. Bruce Cassidy said he's going to miss some time. He's taking warm-ups to see how it should go. And he played. Not only that, but amongst forwards, he had the most ice time for the team. I didn't like the decision, right? Because in my head, I go, well, you're kind of asking for a further aggravation of the injury. But then I thought, I don't know the injury. Maybe this is something where, well, it's not going to get worse by more contact. That seems like a fantasy, but maybe it is. Maybe they talked and just went, you know what? It's actually not going to get that much worse if he takes another hit. It's just a really bad bruise or something. I don't know, but I'm going to trust the team and the doctors because there's no way they would risk his long-term health for one game against Winnipeg. He did play a massive part in this game, though. Bleed, on the other hand, is out. He also took a big hit in that game. Look at the, look at the hand motions. Look at this. Bleed being out means Steen's back in, but Steen goes back into his third line right wing spot. Foligno gets dropped down to the fourth line. Foligno, damn it, whoever told me to say it correctly, I'm trying. Foligno drops to the fourth line on the left side. Still can't, I just can't get there with him. I, I just feel like there's so many moments in the game where I should be like, hey, that was a great opportunity. I don't know if it's just too slow to take advantage. He's there. IQ-wise, he's there. He's just such a, like, everything is, it's neither good nor bad. Just boop. 
Puck's deep. Never get there in time to put pressure on, but Puck's deep. And I legitimately feel bad for Lazar and Nosik on that fourth line because they seem to want to go, 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 and Felino just can't make it happen with them. I, that seems like a weird criticism for a fourth line guy who you want to be responsible in his own end, which he is. So maybe I'm nitpicking, but I just, I can't get there with him right now. I'm not down on him, but I'm not high on him either. Just in the middle. D pairs stay the same. Puck drops! And Marchand immediately looks pretty normal. He gets in the offensive zone. He has a tight turn. He has a nice pass. Now, later in the game, he's going to have a few pa passes that go awry. So you're kind of like, all right, maybe he's feeling it. That's fine, whatever. I really was impressed. I was surprised that he looked so normal. And we looked really good for a couple minutes. And by habit, a goal goes in in the first five minutes. I haven't looked this up, so maybe it's just a feeling. Feels like either we or they, be they being any opposition, score in the first five minutes of every game. Every game. Feels like it, right? 2.45 into the game, and this is a hard wrister from Harkins from the left dot that just beats Rask. He gets a piece with the glove, but it squeaks through. Soft goal, right? I think we can all admit, hey, this one's not a great one to let in. It's not up to Rask's standard, however you want to phrase it. Probably not a good goal to give up. Here's the thing. Puck is in the offensive zone. It's a shot that gets wrapped around, misses the net, wrapped around, and gets punched through to the neutral zone past Carlo's point. And Carlo... This was out of this world slow reaction. I know he's not the fleetest of foot, but this was different. This was not his usual, usually not fast. This was slower than usual. You could see him buffering after it went by him. And then he goes and he gets blown by by Toninato, Toninato, whatever his name is. Toninato goes right by him, takes the offensive zone. Vok comes over. Because he's got to cut the angle now and not give this guy a free lane to the puck. Carlo takes his eye off the play and goes right to in front of Rask, right? Cover the front of the net. Not a bad play. But this means in that short frame time, Tadonato can just puck drop. And who's there to pick it up? Harkins. Free shot. No one's around him. This is a free shot he gets to take. There's a lot of people to blame for this. Mainly... Carlo and Rask. Not a good play. This game got chippy quick. 5-19 in and Cliffy is in front of the net and he cross-checks Harkins. The goal scorer just cross-checks him. Really for nothing. There had to be words or a hit earlier in the play I didn't see. Harkins cross-checks back and Cliffy just goes, time to drop some mitts and suck some tits. Let's go! Another Letty Kenny reference. He throws him. Sheds him. Let's go, Harkins. And Harkins looks like he's running away the whole time. Can't get the mitts off. Ducking everything. Tries to turn away from him. Really only one real punch is thrown. It's an uppercut by Cliffy. And then, boof, everyone goes down. Not a real fight, but a fun one. And it sets the tone for the rest of the game. Two minutes later, Dubois crunches Grizz full numbers into the boards. Grizz goes down holding his left arm. Left arm. It was hard to tell with the replay what got hurt. Was it right arm or left arm? One of his arms. He gets smashed up against the boards, and I think it was his right. It does. There's no real impact with the player behind him. Maybe it was just awkward pressure against the boards, and he just falls down and grabs it. About 20 more seconds of play goes by, or it felt like that, before the whistle is actually blown. He leaves the game, comes back for the second period, which is huge. But at the time, you're really worried and confused as to what just happened and confused why it wasn't a penalty, but then in the replay, you see Grizz look over his shoulder, see the hit coming, and then continue to position himself as he was. I think this was a good no call. Maybe you can make the argument that, well, numbers is numbers. I don't care what what happened. But Grizz does see the guy coming and make the turn. I don't I don't love that play by Grizz. I don't know. I, I I try not to be flip-floppy on the way I see calls and everything, but this one just didn't feel like an egregious thing. I certainly don't think there should be any suspension or anything. If they gave a two-minute minor, I guess, because it was full numbers? Like, nameplate, man. I don't know. This is a weird... At least we can... I think we can admit this is a weird circumstance because he did look over his shoulder and very clearly saw the hit coming. Eight minutes left in the period, and the third line has been working their ass off. And this is a great forecheck by them. 
It begins with them dumping the puck in, getting into it, forcing bad plays around the boards. Vot comes down the left wall, pinches, gets the puck, punches it through to DeBrusque, who just one touch taps this right up to Coyle in the left circle. Coyle attempts a shot, fans on it, and it creeps across the slot to Steen. Hellebuck already committed to Coyle's shot. He's down. Steen basically has an open net. That's a Steen goal. Steen engine. Fucking Jersey's going to be here Monday, potentially. Takes a little while for them to put the kid on. Hockey Authentic does great work. I'm very excited about it. But Steener gets an en- uh, Steiner gets an engine. Steener gets a goal. We'd love to see it. It's a tie game 1-1. I love the feeling of scoring goals because as soon as we score one, I'm like, we're winning this game. Even if we just tied the game, even if it's a one goal lead, even if we're down by one, I'm always like, we're winning this game. We scored the goal. Yes. It's a weird, I, I don't, I don't think I'm good at being a fan. I just always optimistic. Now we do give up a two on one 15 seconds later. They can't connect on the pass. So we get escape with the, the tie. Seven minutes left. Just about a minute after the goal. Carlo and Pagansky. Dude, shed them. Shed him. Carlo's an awkward ass fighter, but they were throwing punches. They were hitting each other in the face, and Carlo won the fight. So that's a big dub for our boy Carlo. He's never going to be the tough guy, guys. And I know we talk about this, and I want him to be a bit tougher. I want him to play a bit tougher. I just don't think we're going to change the nature of this guy. He's still a very useful defender. He's just not going to be your tough guy. Shortly after, Forbert's going to go for high sticking. We kill it, no problem. 25 seconds left, and it's a total backbreaker. You hate these late goals, but it will be their last goal of the game. Marshan turns it over in the Ozone. It goes back the other way. Shifley takes it all the way in, tries to feed the slot. It ends up deflecting off of Kopp and then off of Vok and then past Rask. Can't blame Rask for that one. It's 2-1. I still felt firmly we were winning this game. We only had four shots in the first period. I still liked the way we looked for the most part. We just weren't hitting the net. I was confident that this team was going to have the better effort at the end of the day. And although we only had it by this much, still counts. We look way better to start the second. Grizz is back, like I talked about. 2.30 in, Jakey. Huge turnover in the neutral zone. Get pucks deep. Puck gets sent back up to Forbor on the left point. And this is a quick release. He gets it off his stick in a hurry. Oncoming coil into the fucking center of the slot. Deflects it past Hellbuck. That is such a bang, bang play from players who are starting to understand where each other is going to be. Forbor is so comfortable throwing the puck on net as often as possible. Not always a good thing, but he's doing it well at the moment. And I'm going to take that as a huge win because these pucks keep getting through. Just don't shoot it into the first guy. You know my rule. Just don't shoot it into the first fucking guy in front of you leading to a fast break the other way. We don't need that. So it's 2-2, 5-15 in. It's a power play. Pasta with a crazy tip on the wall. He's on the right wall of our defensive zone, and he's getting buried. And it's a nice tip that goes right to the neutral zone for DeBrusque, who has flames on his heels. DeBrusque was so good in this game. Picks it up, takes the zone. He's a coil coming on the right. He is expertly directed off of his line, right? He gets pushed right off of his line, he being DeBrusque. But he's able to swoop the puck with his long reach. He doesn't have the longest reach. Swoop the puck across to Coyle. Gets behind Coyle, but Coyle's being interfered with. So we draw the, pa- the penalty. We're going to go on the power play. We do nothing with it, but the power play looks good. And DeBrusque with a clever feed to Lazar in the slot. And Lazar gets stoned by Hellebuck. A lot of respect to DeBrusque in this whole sequence. This whole game, he deserves a ton of respect. Buck 30 into the third. Coyle directed into the corner. Knocks off the glass. I hate this stoppage because the boys look really good. We're buzzing. We ended the last period with a lot of momentum. They, I can't believe how fast the glass went up. It didn't shatter, so that's a big part of it. But the glass gets put right back in. On we go. It had to be 45 seconds later. Love to see that. Coyle draws a trip about 30 seconds later. This is a huge power play. Pasta in his office, and it is the cleanest fucking pass from Grizz. Grizz is at the point, feeds it exactly where Pasta wants, and this is a one-timer that gets Hellebuck wrong-footed. He comes across to stop it. Everyone knows what Pasta's trying to do with it. Pasta chooses far side, right top corner. Mm. Huge goal. 11 goals now. 11 goals since, since January 1st. Leading the league. Lot to feel good about there. So we're up a goal, and the rest of the game is... Now, we have chances here, but 
is just a a, a heart attack? It seriously is. 1440 left. Steam for high sticking. Kill it. Huge kill. 1140 left. Wobbler comes in on Rask. And Rask just skies this over the short wall. That's a delay game, right? Delay game? Penalty? We kill that. 150 left. Bergy has a chance to end it with an open net. Initial save gets made, and he skies it over the net. And then a buck 27 left. No sick for high sticking. And we kill it. When was the last time we scored an empty netter to ice a game? Six on four for the last minute and a half. A couple a couple clears that failed. One including, I think it was Bergy knocked it out of the air to keep it in our zone. I know what he was trying to do. He was trying to settle it so he could fling it, but it bounces away from him, and it just leads to more ice time in our zone for them. But we kill it, and that's a dub. 3-2. One point behind Toronto. Hmm. What a great fucking game. Game notes. Vak and Iron. I didn't actually mention him yet, I don't think. He is actually starting to get me there. You know how I've been very adamant that Vakadinen still needs another year. I saw him coming into this season last year from what I saw with him. And I, I've always, look, I'd always wanted Vak to succeed. I liked Vak. And then last year, I was just flabbergasted by, by his inability to be aware of what was around him. And this year, he looks worlds better. And so I was slow. I was slow on this. But I feel good right now with him in the top four. And Riley coming back. I don't know if Riley's going to get slotted in next to Carlo if Vak keeps playing like this. He's probably going to get dropped with Forbort to the third pair. I'm really starting to be convinced he belongs in the top four right now. I, I don't see a reason to change it. And how about a little love for a guy I don't mention nearly enough? Charlie McAvoy with just quietly an incredible game. Defensively, offensively, his neutral game was just sparkling. Big game by the boy. I don't, I don't mention it enough. I point out when he's bad because it's so rare. But then I don't mention when he's good because it's so common. This was a great game by him. And I think he deserves a lot of love for it. We talked about it. Third line was massive. Massive. Steen looks great. DeBrusque looks great. And Coyle looks like he's really getting in sync with those two. Because he also looks great. I am really excited if that is the type of third line we get moving forward. Also, DeBrusque is really making a solid case. Now, small sample size, I know we've done this with DeBrusque, roller coaster, right? But he's making a case to not get what he wanted. And for us just to be like, you know what? You're worth more to us on the team right now for a cup run than... And risking just losing you in free agency. Restricted free agency, but still. Rather than trading you away and hoping we get something decent back. There's an argument there. If this continues for another two weeks, because we're not rushing to trade him anyway. I've I've very much been on the team of wait to the deadline. But if this continues for another couple weeks, I don't know what, I think Sweeney really has a head scratcher on his hands. Power play has looked pretty good the past couple of games. Power play is either back or vastly improved. Andrew kept making the argument that, well, come on. They already, they're top 10 in the league in power play percentage anyway. But we had a stretch there where we looked awful. We're still giving up too many chances. But I like what I've seen. Lastly, pretty happy with Tuca. Tuca looks good after that first one. He's still a little shaky, but we knew this would be a process. All right, guys, that does it for me. Like, comment, subscribe. Nailed it. I believe we have the Ducks Monday. Exciting shit. I, I don't know what else to say. Go Bees!